Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we have another one of our dry dock uh, episodes. And uh, in today's episode, we're gonna answer another pretty common question we've been getting. Uh, much like us, it seems like many of you have been watching the Battleship Texas's dry dock process. And one of the most striking things about her in dry dock is that her rudder is angled a couple of degrees off of center line. And so they've come up with this great marketing motto, come and straighten it. And uh, I myself, when I was there, put all my weight on it to see if I could push it back into shape. Uh, but uh, it seems like only the one true king of Texas can put the rudder back where it goes, and that's not me, apparently. This guy hasn't even walked under his own ship. <laughs> so um, the question we've been getting were our rudders left in the position of the last rudder order like Texas's, or were they not? Uh, are we going to use the rudders to steer the ship on the way to dry dock, or are we not? How's that going to work? Um, so in today's episode, we're going to answer those questions. So first off, whereas the Battleship Texas has a single centerline rudder, Battleship New Jersey has two. They are designed to turn in unison. So you've got one wheel, you turn the wheel, both rudders will turn to answer that helm. The only place where you can turn both rudders individually that I'm aware of is back here in after steering where we are. We've done a number of videos talking about this in the past. I will link one in the description below about the classic barn door stop, which is a situation where one would turn the rudders independently of each other. So, um, Battleship Texas was ancient even by World War II. At the end of the war, it was a no-brainer that she was going to be decommissioned and disposed of. It was surprising she gets turned into a museum ship, but it was not surprising that she was taken out of service. When the Iowa-class battleships were decommissioned in 91-92, everybody thought that they were going to be used again. Whether that meant uh, reactivating them, and we've talked in the past about how a lot of the decommissioning uh, material talks about the possibility of reactivating the ship again, and much of it talks of it as if it's a certainty, uh, or whether these ships are going to be used again as museums, which is what ended up happening with them. So um, the Navy put in more effort to preserve these ships upon decommissioning than they did with a ship like Texas. So with Texas, it seems like, as best as we can tell, when she was um, left, whatever that last helm order to get her next to the pier, they just dropped the helm and walked away. And so the rudder has been there in that position so long that it's seized up. The Iowa-class battleships got a little bit more work uh, when they were decommissioned. And so their rudders should, in theory, still be able to work if you were to light off the steering motors. We are not going to do that when we take the ship into dry dock. There's an amount of work associated with that. It requires an amount of uh, skill and experience to be able to do it. And uh, we, we're going to do this as a dead ship tow, just like it was when she was towed from Long Beach to Bremerton to go into mothballs, from Bremerton through the Panama Canal to Philadelphia, and from Philadelphia to Camden. Uh, it's all been dead ship tows with no use of the rudders at all. The rudders were last used uh, probably in August of uh, 1990 uh, before the ship goes into dry dock for her final inactivation. So ever since then, they've been in place. The steering motors haven't been actuated. We're not going to mess with them. As the ship needs to maneuver, the tugboats are going to do that. They will be alongside the ship and they will be pushing at various places to make us turn so that we can make it down the river. Um, like when they pull us out of here, they're going to have to rotate us 180 to point our bow down the river. Um, so we're not going to use the actual rudders. So then the question is, the steering motors aren't working. We're not sure how much hydraulic fluid is in these uh, steering cylinders. The, there is a tide associated with the river. Are the rudders just back there moving on their own? Or as we move the ship, are they going to start to do that? The answer to that question is no. And this is my exhibit A. Uh, these pipes here, there's one on each side of each rudder. Uh, these were installed by the Navy at decommissioning as part of the mothballing process. 
to keep the rudder from moving. And it's going to help preserve the packing in this rudder post uh, just to keep it from leaking. It's going to keep this from moving all over the place and changing how the tide interacts with the ship, how the ship then pulls against her mooring lines, against the pier. Uh, and so it's just better for the ship to leave these in place and have it not moving. So if we're not going to move with our own rudder, our own rudder cannot move and is wedged in place, are we going to find that the rudder is at an angle? So the rudder angle transmitter, which is that box over there, needs electrical power to work. Whatever circuit powers that is not on. So it is not transmitting the rudder angle to the various repeaters around the ship, particularly at the various steering stations. So how do we know what angle the rudder is at? The analog way. Notice that uh, this backup is so critical. They even have a battle lantern here pointing at it. So if the ship loses power and we're still able to maneuver in some way, the guys down here can actually see what the rudder angle is. So as you can see, our rudder angle is currently at zero. So if the rudder angle is at zero, does that mean that the rudders are going to be straight fore and aft? No. Actually, the rudders on Iowa-class battleships, when they are installed properly and aligned, when this reads zero, the rudders are actually turned two degrees inwards. So this one is the port rudder that will be turned two degrees that way. On the other side of this bulkhead is the starboard rudder that's going to be turned two degrees this way. And so they're, they're those couple of degrees off when they're actually turning on this. We know this thanks to some great research that Ed Zikowski has been doing. He's, he's uh, a volunteer up at Slater and goes through a ton of blueprints and uh, of course research that John Miano, our own blueprints wizard who's gone through our whole collection and, and has written books about it, um, they're the ones who pointed out that just because this says zero doesn't mean that the angles are actually straight. So when we go into dry dock, even though everything says that these rudders are straight, the uh, Everything is the way it's supposed to be. They cannot move. They're reading zero. They'll actually be turned in on each other about two degrees. So what other questions do you guys have about the dry docking process? Your questions directly led to us doing research. The answer was off the top of my head, that's at zero angles. That's not enough information to make a video. Uh, but thanks to the research that some of these great guys in the historic ships community are doing, uh, we learned something new about Iowa-class battleships. And uh, as far as I know, that information is on the blueprints, but it's not published anywhere yet. So now you guys are learning it new for the first time. If you guys have any other questions about the dry dock process, leave them in the comment section down below. Um, we will potentially answer them in future dry docking videos every Wednesday at 7 Eastern. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the dry docking process. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and the channel. Thanks for watching.